Hello, I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and I am glad to be joined with a group of people representing kind of the business and nonprofit impact of the COVID-19 emergency. Um, with me again is Jessica Eschleman, who is the executive director of Union Square Main Streets. Hello to you, Jessica. Hello, Dave. Thank you so much for having us back. And thanks to our business leaders who are with us today. And also with me is Jen Atwood, the executive director of East Somerville Main Streets. Hello, Jen. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for having me um, participate in part of this. Thank you. And uh, joining us from the uh, business perspective is Michael Robles, who is the general manager at Machu Chicken and Machu Picchu. Hello, Michael. Hi, Dave. How are you? Doing all right. And uh, from the nonprofit perspective, we have Lynn Gervins, who is the executive director of Mudflat Pottery Studio in East Somerville. Hello to you, Lynn. Thanks, Dave. Nice to be here with you all. Well, why don't we, we do want to start off uh, with hearing about these perspectives. Um, so Michael and Lynn, um, how are you personally doing right now? And um, what are your immediate concerns during this business, business interruption? Um, and then how have you been able to adapt? Uh, why don't we start off with, with Michael? Well, personally, I'm doing okay. Um, you know, so much, has, so much has changed in such a short period of time. Um, it just learning to kind of adapt to everything has been one of, uh, our biggest struggles. I'm sure not just me, but as a business and as a community itself, there's just so much that we need to be so mindful of now. Uh, a personal example. Now I have scheduled laundry time. So learning to kind of make the time to go down and do the laundry at this specific time and kind of work with everyone in my building to kind of prevent any risk of spreading coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. Being mindful uh, when you go out in public, you know, having proper PPE equipment um, and maintaining six feet minimum of social distancing and just kind of staying in touch with, with family, making sure everyone's okay, everyone's doing well. And uh, what about your your um, concerns with uh, the business interruption? How are you adapting there at Machu? We're we're trying our best right now. Uh, we have a couple of different uh, business concerns. The, the the first one that comes to mind, I'd say, is is following proper procedure to reduce the risk of of COVID nineteen within our establishment. You know. Um, uh, another part would be financially uh, staying afloat. You know, we've been uh, following different guidelines set by the CDC, uh, always checking in with uh, with the WHO websites and local boards of health to follow all guidelines set by them um, to kind of help maintain and reduce the risk of COVID-19. Uh, Governor Baker passed a bill to to serve alcohol and uh, and food only through takeout and delivery, as everyone may know. And we've kind of been learning just as we go about this, how can we change our business setup and model to kind of help us stay afloat and kind of help us uh, maintain our business open. You know, we started offering new delivery. Uh, we've, uh, our website now, uh, you can order through a website, you know, we have a full limited time menu where we've merged the two restaurants and it's all been a learning experience. And, uh, and Lynn, um, how are you doing? And you're, 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 you're coming, um, at this from a different perspective. You're a nonprofit, uh, mud flat, which is a pottery studio, um, the famous pottery studio in East, East Somerville. Um, and, uh, you are closed and you've had, to, you've had to do that. Um, to comply with the with the um, uh, with the emergency. So, uh, how are you doing, and how are you adapting? Thanks, Dave. Well, personally, I'm doing fine. Um, I'm uh, kind of moved the mudflat uh, office to my house, so I have half the dining room table. Um, I share with my husband; he's got the other half. And um, so, I feel like I'm still doing a lot of administrative work for the organization. 
but um, that just means that I'm I, I'm just trying to manage that from home a lot. Um, but otherwise, family's all good, and we're all hanging in there and just you know doing all the things that Michael mentioned. You know, trying to protect ourselves and our families. Um, in terms of the business, I'm just we're just trying to figure out how we're going to stay afloat um, as a nonprofit business where we now have no income coming in because we weren't we aren't able to do any of our classes or uh, workshops and all the programming that we had scheduled. So we shut down on March 14th and um, we're just trying to figure out, you know, how to make that, uh, how, to, how to get through this until we're able to start operations again. And it's really frustrating to not be able to offer the services that we are, all of our constituency groups have been counting on to come to Mudflat as a place for create, be, to be creative and to relax and to kind of, this is probably a place that they would love to be coming to right now. So to take their mind off of all this stuff. And we're, as a non-essential business, we're not allowed to be open or even to sell any materials to them. So that's just been a little hard. And where, where are you finding uh, reliable information to guide your decisions uh, right now? Um, is it uh, a state agency website? Is it uh, a city website? Is it all of it? Uh, what, what, what's been the most helpful for you? So we're getting a, we're seeing a lot of information through the Mass Cultural Council or the Nonprofit Finance Fund or Network for Good. So I spent a lot of time last week doing lots of webinars on getting information from all those places about the CARES Act and applying for the payroll protection plan and uh, doing things around cash flow scenarios for if we open, whenever we open and what that looks like for us. So just trying to gather as much information as we can to understand how this is going to impact our business and how we're going to move forward and reopen at some point in the future. Mm. And same question to you, Michael. Um, where, where are you finding the, uh, the best reliable information for you? You know, we try to stay up to date with all the, I, I, it feels like every day you have a new guideline being set there. And I guess just staying up to date with all those guidelines, we find uh, a lot of them in the Somerville Economic Development, the National Restaurant Association. And one of the most important ones was Union Square Main Streets. Uh, they've been really helpful, especially especially Jessica Eshelman. She's been uh, sending out daily emails with lots of useful information for applying to the PPE and the disaster loan applications who are offering lots of assistance. Thank you so much. Um, aside from that, like I said, just going to the CDC websites, following guidelines set by the WHO and local boards, you know, that it's really important to kind of stay up to date with those, especially during this time. Um, yeah. And uh, Michael, what, um what support have have you provided for your um, employees at this time, and what concerns are you hearing from your employees? Uh, you know, it's it's really scary right now. A lot of our employees they have families to to care for, and a lot of them take public transportation. So it it really becomes a, a huge risk for them to even come to work. You know, I can tell that a lot of them are are afraid and that they're worried for the safety of themselves and their family. So uh, some of the stuff that we've done to kind of help them, to be honest, we're, we're only open to really help financially support them. Um, a lot of the workers that come every day, we've, we've, uh, we've given the option to our staff to uh, come in or not. No one's uh, mandatory, no one's scheduled mandatory. The staff that does come in, um, you, you, you see them every day because we're, we're kind of short staffed basically because of that. So the staff that does come, we give them protective, uh, personal protective equipment like masks and gloves. We make sure that the hand sanitizers are filled all the time. We've uh, become really flexible with the schedule changes and the schedules that people want to work uh, to kind of help, help them in any way that we can, you know. This this is really important at a time like this to kind of get the community to work together, not just our, our staffing, but also all local businesses. You know, we're a really small, small family owned business. Um, and we, we work with a lot of the partners in the community are, are also small family owned businesses. For example, Mayflower is one of our suppliers. 
And we, we can see, when we talk to them, we see that everyone is struggling right now. And uh, all businesses are being impacted. That's one of the biggest problems that we've seen is through supplies and inventory. It's so much harder to find all the necessary supplies that we, we need and inventory, like hand sanitizers, gloves, bleach products. Um, it's not as easy, but uh, I believe we just keep supporting each other, staying in good communication, follow all guidelines set that it's, it's a way that we're going to see change the fastest, the way that we're going to help protect ourselves and those around us. And Lynn, what about your employees over at Mutflat? So uh, we have a gallery space in Porter Square in Cambridge in the shopping center there, and that also was shut down. Uh, it's a retail gallery space. So those employees were furloughed, and I know that a few of them have now uh, uh, gone on to file, file for unemployment benefits. Um, we also have our teachers. We have about 20 teachers who um, are teaching classes and workshops for us. And we were able to pay them through the end of our winter semester, which should have just been ending now, even though we haven't had classes for the last four weeks. Um, but they're kind of on hold now until we are able to start offering programming again. And then we have a small studio staff that's admin and uh, the technical support for firing the kilns and mixing clay and glazes. And those people are all still on payroll. Um, and we're going to continue to try and pay them for as long as we can, hopefully through the, the payroll protection program and the funding that comes from that. Uh, and then because we're really trying to um, rely on them when, for when we're able to start opening up again, that we'll need them to come back and, and be on board and help us get everything up and running again. So we're trying to pay them as, at, in full as long as we can. Um, with full benefits that they get already so that we can continue to keep our business intact while we wait through this. And um, finally, to the both of you, like how can the Somerville community support your your business or your nonprofit at this time? Uh, Michael, why don't we start with you? Sure. I think there's a couple of ways that the community can help. You know, this year was a really big year for Machu Picchu. We uh, are celebrating our 20th year anniversary. And, you know, if you're married, I'm sure that uh, if you're celebrating 20 years, you're probably already uh, well rehearsed and an expert in a little social distancing. But we were kind of hoping for the opposite with our restaurant. We were hoping that we could get the community to come together, celebrate as, as a family. We would uh, wanted to give back to the community just like they have given to us for so many years. Uh, especially, I mean, we, we, we wouldn't have been here without the community surrounding and the community support. And that's really important to us. And there's really not just us, but to support any small business in, in the Somerville community. It's just, you know, give them a call, check in on their websites, follow them on their social media to see how they're doing. If you can buy a gift card, you know, support our business by buying a gift card for a later time. Uh, you know, we do offer non-contact delivery now. It's free delivery. Um, we just leave it at your doorstep with the receipts. You know, you text us a copy of that. Uh, we offer lots of pickup uh, at our restaurants or catering services. If you if you have a big family, that's not a problem. We're willing to work with the community as well. Uh, we've also started to give back to the medical workers. You know, we know that a lot of the medical workers in, in Somerville are working tire, tirelessly and endlessly to kind of help slow down the progress of this virus. So we've started a campaign where you can buy a meal and donate a meal to uh, a medical worker. You don't have to visit them at all. We'll drop it off for them. And, and it's just a way. And we'll also, we're trying to match some of those meals as well and in a way to support the community. And I just think that if the community also does the same to us, helps us support them, helps us support our workers, and together we can all get through this. It's a time where we need to be together, you know. And Lynn, uh, how can the Somerville community support Mutt Flat at this time? Well, I think one of the things that we were so disappointed about was, was all the community events that have been canceled. Um, we have uh, we've participated in the East Central Main Streets Carnival, which is a great way for us to be out on the street and get to know our neighbors more. 
Um, we have we do programming uh, with other community groups in the Somerville community, some of which got shortened or just have, weren't we weren't able to finish them. We were supposed to have a big reception with a bunch of groups from the Mystic Learning Center. They were going to be coming to Mudflat middle of March for a reception to show the work that we had done with them through various workshops. And so we're disappointed that those things are not happening now and we don't, you know, that we are missing that connection. So we're really hoping that when we're all back to working that we will be able to make those things up somehow, really come back together, that people will be able to come back to feel, will feel comfortable to come back and take classes with us or workshops with us or welcome our faculty members into their organizations where we do these programs. So with my, same as what Michael was saying, I'm really hoping that we can continue to give back to the community in the ways that we were doing before, but also no hope that the community will come back to us and um, that they're waiting to, you know, that they're all, hopefully they're all waiting to come back and get their hands in clay again so that we can all kind of share this experience together and work our way through it in a, in a really positive way. And now we want to turn to uh, Jen and Jessica uh, to update us with any sort of new information that uh, they want to relay uh, since our since they were last on our show maybe about three weeks ago. Um, so Jen, do you have any uh, updates that you want to share with the Somerville community? Um, so Lynn already mentioned this, but the big uh, piece that uh, people should be aware of is with the extension of the closures uh, for large events in Somerville. Through June, we've had to cancel our largest event of the year, which is Carnival. Um, that said, we are working um, or trying to find a way to maybe we 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 will probably won't be able to reschedule Carnival, but we want to continue to. Um, support the community either through some virtual programming or to um, be able to pay the artists to do other programming throughout the rest of the year. So we're working on that right now. So more to come with that. Um, so that's my my big update. <laughs> and Jessica, uh, how are you doing? And um, do you have any updates for us? Um, I'm doing okay, Dave, you know, checking in with businesses every day um, throughout the week, something that we started doing about um, a week and a half ago. So I believe it has been since the last time I joined you on this program is, um, is activating our promotions committee, which is a group of business leaders and owners who volunteer to contribute to efforts in the square. Um, usually they're working on things like the hashtag love Union Square flyer program. Maybe you saw those adorning Union Square for the past several months, things like hem your pants in Union Square, get your bangs trimmed in Union Square, really fun campaigns to get people thinking about local. We've retooled that group. Um, thank you, Michael, so much for your kind words about the information that's coming out of our office to local businesses. We do it does feel like almost daily messages to make sure everybody's getting the most up-to-date information that's been vetted and tailored to a union square business is application of that information. However, it became clear to me that the businesses, uh, I started thinking about the businesses we might not be reaching through email. Um, several folks now in this day and age are comfortable on a computer and using email, but certainly not everyone. So our promotions committee, it's made up of some amazing folks, Debbie from Play Union, Joe from El Potro, Brian from Event Them, uh, Ryan from Loyal Supply Co. and more. We're picking up the phone and we're calling 192 businesses to say, how are you doing? Do you have the support that you need? Are you aware of these resources? Uh, it's amazing who's come forward in the community to offer pro bono support on completing things like the CARES Act loan applications, whether that's the uh, payroll protection program loan or disaster loans. But we realize, uh, particularly the PPP application, it is cumbersome and requires um, a significant amount of documentation to position yourself for them to become forgivable. So we have started working in those directions to understand who it is that we can be serving um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and who may need additional support in, in those regards. 
And in the in the last few minutes that we have here, I just want to ask um, anybody if they have anything additional, like either some sort of tip or trick that they've they've come up with about a certain application process, or um, you know, to maybe address a certain frustration with with uh, a process that's happening. Um, I'll just open it up to to anybody to see if um, if anybody wants to to take that. Well, I can speak about the PPP application because we actually did go through that process with Winter Hill Bank, which was really helpful. And um, I think that the, the the hardest part about it early on was that there was so much conflicting information about what you needed to do to apply. So we got in touch with our the banker that we know there, and he was very helpful in terms of you know sending me a list of what we needed. We've now had to amend that a couple of times. But I agree with what Jessica said. It's it's the, the application itself wasn't that difficult, but coming up with all of the uh, backup information might be hard for you know small business to you know get get their act together to do that because there's a lot of different parts that are involved. And it just uh, was it was just hard to track everything down, especially when you're not working in your office. So, but the banks are really trying to be helpful in terms of getting that information together to then send it off to the SBA for approval. And um, Jen, I forgot to ask you how you're doing, so I want to ask that now. <laughs> um, and uh, just so, yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm very aware of the fact that I have a lot of privilege in my personal life. That I'm able to work from home. Um, that not everyone has that ability, um, and the fact that I have resources not everyone has so I'm thankful for that but also very aware of that um I mean personally it's um you know I've had I, I wish I could be with loved ones and it's hard not being able to be with loved ones at this time and um I think it's frustrating when you see people not doing what they can uh to social distance themselves so I just want to continue to encourage people to practice um, the, the right technique, um, and not put all of, all the people that are doing it correctly. Uh, uh, it's just really frustrating, um, to see that. And I hope that people will take it seriously and protect themselves and others as they can. Um, and then in terms of our organization, it's frustrating and disappointing that we've had to cancel our large event of the year, but recognizing that it's the right thing to do. Um, is also like something that we have to um, continue to think about and not just for this event, but for all of our public events for the next year, I think we have to really keep in mind um, like what's the right thing to do um, for the public safety. And as an organization, we've, I think now that we're hitting closer to the peak um, for the community for, for Massachusetts and for Somerville, um, we're starting to hear stories of people that we know, um, former board member spouse um, was was recently diagnosed. Um, and so we're we're just as we're hearing more and more of those stories, trying to um, take it in stride and doing what we can um, where we can and acknowledging that sometimes you can't you can't help you, you, you can only do so much right it's frustrating you want to do more I personally wish I could do more to help the businesses um, right now but um, you know there's limited resources available to be able to do that and um, you can only do so much and then um, I'll just let everybody conclude by doing a round robin here of uh, any sort of websites that you want to uh, bring people to um, and why don't we start with you, uh, Lynn? Uh, wh wh where where should people go um, if they want to find out more about Mudflat and how to support you at this time? Great, thanks. So uh, our website is mudflat.org, and um, we have updates there about what's going on with our programming and how you can donate to help us um, uh, keep us afloat. But uh, I also just want to uh, say that we're really missing our community of our students and our faculty and our studio artists. And um, and we miss being in our building uh, uh, at 81 First Street or 81 Broadway in Somerville, and um, just really hope that we are all back there soon. Thanks. And Michael Robles, uh, where where should people go if they want to order takeout or delivery uh, or order a gift card from Machu Picchu? 
you know, we're on a, a couple of different types of platforms, uh, Dave. I strongly recommend not just for our restaurant, but please yeah. visit any business's website, their direct website before going to a secondary source. You're going to find lots of lots of changes. You know, a lot of people have started their own delivery service like we have. They have uh, updated their own websites to take orders. You can visit ours at machuchickenboston.com. Uh, again, that's machuchickenboston.com. You can order right from the website, pay there, say you want delivery. We provide non-contact delivery. You can also visit our Facebook, our Instagram, Machu Chicken Boston, Machu Picchu Boston. For both um, those, you'll, you'll find lots of information. We're always on there posting dishes, foods, ways that we're trying to uh, kind of get by, fight this together. You know, as some final words. Uh, oh, also give us a call. Always, please call us. I'm always here. You'll find me 12, 13 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, give us a call. And if you ever want to talk to me, if you need any more information, any questions about how we're handling something, or if you just want a friend, I'm always there. Um, uh, and at some final words, just, you know, everyone's afraid right now. Everyone's nervous. Everyone is is concerned for themselves, for their families, for the economy. So just be kind, be kind to each other. You know, we're going to get through this together. Be kind to your neighbor, to your friends and to strangers because we're all struggling right now. And the only way that this is going to be easier is if we work together. That's uh, some great, great words there. Um, thank you for sharing those sentiments. Uh, Jennifer Atwood, um, some, some websites you could point us to. Um, you can always find oh, what's open in East Somerville on our main page at eastsomervillemainstreets.org. I recommend checking that out. And Jessica Eshelman? Um, UnionSquareMain.org lists all Union Square businesses that are open. This is restaurants and beyond. It's services, it's health and wellness, it's retail. Uh, so please check there. We're working very hard to keep it updated and current as those things are changing quickly. I'm going to um, also suggest people check out unionsquaremain.org backslash events because we've retooled our event page to feature pretty fun virtual experiences at Union Square. Who knew Josh from Juliet Restaurant can teach Tai Chi, but if you're looking for some mind-body relief at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays, you can tune in for free. So I'll just note that. And then finally, many of our local businesses are connected to us through our social media pages. They tag us often. So if folks want to find us on Insta, on Twitter, on Facebook, it's a great way to stay connected to businesses like Machu Chicken um, and find out what everybody's doing in uh, to show some social media love to those businesses, write a review for them on Yelp, give them a thumbs up, give them a shout out. It really goes a long way. And I'm just struck with Michael's sign off because my email signature right now has keep it local, keep it kind, keep it local. So what a great way to, to sign off here tonight, today. Very nice. Yeah, keep it kind, keep it local. I want to thank all my guests uh, Jessica Eshelman, Executive Director of Union Square Main Streets, Jen Atwood, Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets, Lynn Gervins, Executive Director of Mudflat Pottery Studio, and Michael Robles, General Manager at Machu Chicken and Machu Picchu. Thank you all. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.